Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're looking at the five courses of Israel's punishment. We've done the first two, and this evening we're going to do number three. I'm not going to recap like I have done. I'll leave that for the weekend because we're midweek. I just want to keep it short and sweet, to the point. Cut to the chase. And uh, so we're going to be focusing on beasts because this is what happens if you read Leviticus 26 verses 21 and 22, which is the third course. Every time God says, if you will not hearken unto me and do my commandments, then he'll bring judgment. So it was um, punishment with regards to the second one uh, for seven years. And then with regards to Leviticus 26 verse 21, it says for seven years or seven times they're going to have plagues, seven times more worse. Uh, so it goes on and it tells us that... Um, the, the highways will be desolate, and that's actually what's happening in uh, Israel at the moment. They're in the second lockdown. It's a hard lockdown. Uh, originally, they were going to go in for three weeks. Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu is saying it's perhaps going to be 30 days. And um, so the highways are desolate, fulfilling this passage of Scripture. We also know that um, the, the disease has a fever, which is in... Uh, Leviticus chapter 26 verse 16 it mentions that and their land shall be desolate as well so a lot of these things that are played out here in Leviticus 26 is happening to Israel today here and now uh, or there and now so it tells us furthermore in verse 22 that one of the plagues that will come upon Israel the third passage is that beasts will come upon them and rob them of their children. Beasts. So, just I want to focus on beasts. That's where, where I'm going to really hit it tonight. Um, so, it mentions about four things, but I'm primarily going to be looking at beasts. It says, Rob you of your children. As soon as you see Rob you of your children, then you must realize that it's uh, the antithesis of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, which says, Train your child in the ways of the Lord, and when he is old, you will not depart. So, clearly, what's happening is there's this generation that's growing up that does not know God, uh, that is not inclined to know God, to seek after righteousness. They are more adept with being hooked onto their devices. It's interesting, the Bible actually tells us beware of Satan's devices, but it seems as if every child above the age of 12 today has some kind of device, and they're streaming stuff and um, bringing uh, things that you wouldn't permit into your home by just virtue of your moral consciousness you wouldn't do it saved unsaved but that stuff is coming in via your TV via your devices it's coming into your home um, and you're not even aware of it you're streaming the fourth from Satan so let's focus on the beasts um, we know there's an end times. We know there's a falling away. We know this generation that's growing up is the generation that's going to see the return of our Lord Jesus Christ at the rapture because they're the most unprepared generation there is in the history of mankind. They're the most photographed generation. Selfies, Instagram. The photographs that are uploaded to Instagram or selfies are mind-boggling the numbers. Uh, it's... I heard a figure of 93 million and that was six months ago. So um, it's really a, a, um, a generation that focuses on itself. And that's what Paul tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. Perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of their own selves. So everything's got to do with self. Looking at, at me, myself and I. The Holy Trinity as we like to put it. So the beasts. What are the beasts? Let's get going and let's get cracking on this. It's midweek. I don't want to keep you long. So, the beast will rob you of your children. This is fulfilled for us in 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 24. Alright, in chapter 2 verse 24, Elisha is mocked. This young generation is going to mock the old generation. Elisha is mocked and they say to him, go up, go up, you bald head. And they make an allegation to him uh, going up like Elijah went, uh, uh, Elijah went up. So um, there's this, they, they speak against the spiritual things. They don't uphold the things of God. 
They're not spiritually discerned. And what actually happens is uh, through his annoyance, so to speak, he curses them and uh, two she-bears come out of the woods and they tear 42 children. Two she-bears. So they come upon the children of Israel, 42. So this 42 is interesting because when you get to uh, the 70th week of Daniel, after Satan sets himself up in the Antichrist, in the temple of God, that's halfway through the seven year period of tribulation, and the last three and a half years, that three and a half year period is equal to 42 months. And Daniel gives it as 1,260 days if you just want to. If you're going for a walk, just calculate that out. Three and a half months, um, three and a half years equals 42 months equals 1,260 days if all the days are 30 days, for instance. All the months are 30 days. I'm getting confused here. Um, so we see this fulfilled, this course fulfilled at the time of Elisha. It pans out and happens. As I told you before, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9, the things that shall be have been the things that shall be done uh, are done shall be done there is nothing new underneath the sun so what does it mean for Israel with regards to the tribulation because they go through these punishments these plagues during the period of the tribulation this is the third installment that we're looking at so I have to make a note of third just so you can check it out in time to come, I, I can remember this is the third of five. So, um, beasts shall come. Two she bears came. Okay? Revelation chapter 13 tells us that there's an antichrist that will come onto the scene and the false prophet. So, Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 speaks about the antichrist. And Revelation 13 verse 11 There's another beast that comes onto the scene. There's two And we call him the false prophet When Israel first started their history they were a monarchy under God uh, a, a Theocracy under God then they became a monarchy under kings and now they had democracy present, but there'll come a time where the Antichrist will take rule of the state and the false prophet will take rule of the religion. So church and state will be governed and outsourced by these two entities which are beasts in the eyes of God. But so is the prophecy that is what's going to happen and uh, we can see it paying out here as it was spoken. So when I spoke to you of the book of Job the other day, Job encounters the stories with God and two of them had to got to do with two beasts. The one was Behemoth in um, chapter 40. You come across Behemoth. And in chapter 41, you've got Leviathan. Now I told you that Job was a picture of the, the waning nation of Israel because Job is 42 chapters long 42 chapters long there's your 42 months and uh, 42 children of 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 24 and he's a, a waning prophet and um, towards the end of Job he's, he's, he's spoken by God about Behemoth and Leviathan. If you look at Behemoth and Leviathan, they are pictures, pictures of Satan. Pictures. So you need to read it in your own, own time. Uh, Behemoth is in Job 40 verse 15 to 24. It tells us that he hides in the, in the shady parts. He's the chief of his ways. Uh, chief, got to do with principality. Ephesians 6 verse 12 touches on this. That... Um, 
we fight not against flesh, against blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world. So Behemoth will fall into that category because he was a ruler of this darkness of this world in the, in the swamps. And uh, so you can read that passage and you, you start to see description of, of, of Satan and these, and these evil entities. Leviathan 2. Um, his description of fire breathing and, and things like this um, gives us a picture, gives us just some more information of Satan and his fall. So Job, the way the prophet speaks about these two beasts, um, and what's interesting is in, the, in Revelation chapter 13 verse 1, um, he, the, the first one um, comes out of the water. And it tells us in uh, Revelation 17 verse 15 that the water are the peoples, the languages, the tongues, the peoples, um, the multitudes. So the Antichrist in Revelation 31, he ascends out of, out of the waters. He comes by the people prominent out of the waters. The next beast in Revelation 13 verse 11 comes out of the earth and if you compare that Revelation 13 to Job 40 verse 41 uh, 40 and 41 chapters you'll see Behemoth he comes out of the earth and Leviathan the waters furthermore Daniel spoke about the beasts. He spoke about the lion, the bear, the leopard, and then the dragon. And this dragon that Daniel spoke about was, uh, the, well, the leopard was ferocious. And this, Dan, this dragon was strong exceedingly. And um, it was great with iron teeth. And it was dreadful and it was terrible. And this was his description of this fourth beast. Um, you'll notice when, Jesus, when, when David, who's who's a forerunner of Jesus Christ um, because Jesus Christ came in the lineage of David and David was a king of Judah etc and um, before David became king now this is, this is before David became king in the Old Testament is a picture of before Jesus Christ becoming king of kings during the millennial period and David he he said in 1 Samuel 17.34 that he had slew a lion, a bear, and then finally had taken out Goliath. The two beasts, the lion and the bear. Daniel had visions or lion and bear. And Goliath ultimately is a picture of the Antichrist. And when David slews the, the Antichrist, that's when he takes his role uh, in time as being the king of Judah. And Satan is taken out, the Antichrist is taken out by the breath of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see these um, pictures of Behemoth, Leviathan, the lion, the bear, um, the beast rising out of the waters, the beast rising out of the earth, and it tells us the third course of Israel's punishment will these be these beasts on their land for three and a half years. Um, when I spoke to you last time, I mentioned to you about the second course that had to do with division, and you saw the kingdom of Israel divided in 1 Kings 12. And if you read the next chapter in 1 Kings 13, you'll read about the lion that takes out the prophets that's on the donkey, but he doesn't uh, devour, he doesn't eat the prophet. And then the, um, the other prophet comes and puts him on his donkey and rides him into the city, which is a, which is a, a picture with regards to Zechariah 9.9, 9, where it said, Greatly rejoice, for thy king comes to Zion, um, um, riding on a donkey. So we'll see that Jesus Christ will come, though Satan thought he defeated Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 7 and 8, 8 tells us that had, he, had they known 
about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the princes of this world would not have crucified him. The princes, the chiefs, the principalities of this world would not have crucified him. So Jesus Christ is coming again. He is going to be returning into Jerusalem as their king, as their Messiah. Once the Antichrist is taken out of the way, once these beasts are defeated, the Antichrist and the false prophet. Um, furthermore, with Job, Job has these um, words from the Lord with regards to Behemoth and Leviathan, but in Job chapter 4, from verse 12 to 15, he had an experience with the Spirit. When the Spirit came near him, it, it put up the hairs of his arms, of his body, uh, and fear came upon him. Um, and uh, just to show you that the, with, with regards man and these dragons, in, in the flesh, man cannot overcome a behemoth, or man cannot overcome a leviathan. It's, it's David and Goliath in the flesh. So you need to overcome these by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Now the blood of the Lamb is done. It's, it's perfect. It's complete. It's finished. The blood of the Lamb. The problem is Satan, the dragon, he's after your testimony. He goes about like a roaring lion to see he, who he can devour. Now he devoured, well he killed the prophets in uh, 1 Kings 13. He's trying, to take, he's trying to rob you of your testimony. The one thing that you have is your testimony with the Lord. Don't be robbed of it. He wants to rob the beasts and they're going to rob the children. The children will be robbed. 2 Kings 2.24, the children are robbed. The next generation. God's trying to take out the next... Um, the devil's trying to take out the next generation, pardon me. Your children, the devil's after your children. If you're in church, he's after your children. He's after the next generation. He's trying to get them. What are you doing? You've got the blood of the Lamb. You know... You, in your, in your strength, it's not flesh against blood. You cannot conquer these things, flesh against blood. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of uh, YouTube people out there speaking about all kinds of things that are happening, but they're all from a secular standpoint. And they're not giving you the tools to how to overcome these beasts. So how will you overcome these beasts? How will Israel overcome these beasts during the tribulation when they come? How are you overcoming Satan when he comes against you like a roaring lion for you to devour? Paul tells us, in his last chapter of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17, he said, None stood with me except the Lord gave me strength, and He, he uh, delivered me from the mouth of lions. So, can you say you'll be delivered from the mouth of lions? I remember Benaiah, one of David's um, mighty men. He went down on a snowy day. He went down into a pit and he slew a lion. And that snow always pictured to me of, of the righteousness of God. Have you got the righteousness of God? If you believe in God, it's counted to you as righteousness. Have you got the, the, the belief, the faith in God, that you can go into the pit on a snowy day? Or like David, you can claim a lamb back that the bear stolen, or a, a, a child of God back that the lion's taken, and take it out of its paw. Are you able to do that? Have you got faith to intercede for your family, and to get on your hands and knees, and to, and to claim back what Satan's taken? What the dragons are after. What they want to devour. The third course of punishment of Israel is these beasts. But we are Christians. We have the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the blood of the Lamb. We don't have to go what they, what they go through. There's some Christians that are saying that we go through the tribulation. Or we go through part. Or we do something. This is not for us. The seven years of punishment are not for us. The seven years of plagues. The seven times of plagues, they are not for us. They are for Israel. Leviticus chapter 26. We are looking for the blessed hope. And the glorious appearing. That's for us. Tell your kids about that. About the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. These beasts are strong. And exceeding. Brutal. Dreadful. Terrible. With great iron teeth. They're coming to, to 
kill, steal, and destroy. What can you do? What, how can you stand in the gap? How can you stand in the gap? That your end, the end of Job was better than his beginning. It was more blessed than his beginning. Because he prayed and interceded for his friends. Your prayer and intercession can stave off these beasts. When you pray, it's like having... I was telling my wife the other day, it's like you've got a sword, you've got a, a spear, and you've got a bow. So when you pray and intercede for your friends and family, if you use your bow, you keep the enemy at a distance by, say, 50 meters, or however that arrow can shoot. If you're using your spear, you're keeping them at, say, 10 meters distance. But if you're only using your spear, it means the enemy's right here. It's, it's confrontation. You, 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 you're in combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat. The more we pray, the more we intercede, the further the enemy is from us, the further the enemy will be from them. I close with this. It tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. It says neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth. Now listen to this. Nor any other creature, no creature, no bear, no lion, no behemoth, no leviathan, no beast can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen and thank you.